Hello, everyone. I am San Tanaka. Nice to meet you. Today, I will introduce how to backup files from a rental server to your computer or cloud storage. Since many services charge additional fees, this is a good opportunity to learn. I had previously worked with Google Cloud and AWS, so you cannot get started without knowing at least this much. I will explain using a restricted server as an example. Let's get started. First, let us configure your home computer to allow external connections. Hello, what is the OS of the computer you are backing up? Hello, Sumugi. I am using Ubuntu 24.04, but this can be done on Windows as well. In the video, I am currently checking if the port is open to accept external connections. You need to make sure that TCP port 22 is open or that one at work. Also, make sure to apply similar settings on your router. Hmm, it's important to note that the names can differ depending on the router. Yes, exactly. Let me explain a bit about this. The router I am currently using calls it port forwarding. However, depending on the router M's manufacturer or model, it might be referred to by a different name, as shown in the video. Even if the router's name or setting screen looks different, the core functionality remains the same allowing access from outside to a specific device by a port. In many cases, you will need to figure out which function corresponds to this feature and configure it yourself. I see. This was very informative. If I'm unsure, I'll refer to the manual. All right, next, let is create a directory for the backup to make things clear. I will also assign write permissions to this directory. Next, I will ask SLH into the source server to prepare for the backup. When you first connect, you will likely be in the home directory, so I will generate an authentication key and configure the connection to my computer. This is the reverse process from what we usually do. Yes, that's right. First, since we are able to connect to this server, let us check the configuration file. Indeed, it is there. I'm currently logging in using an ED25519 key. From here, we will create an SSH key on this server, where the files are, and configure it so we can connect to my computer. You will be prompted to enter a file name and passphrase during the process, but unless you have a specific reason, just press enter to proceed. Although the RSA key generated by the commands in the video is sometimes considered less secure than ED2 plan 5 planks 1 plan 9, RSA is still sufficiently safe for general purposes. Next, we will copy the generated public key to my computer. We will use the format soon in the video to copy it, but you can also specify the path of the public key file or the port number. The link in the video description provides a very clear explanation, so feel free to check it out. Oh, an error occurred. It seems this command is restricted and cannot be used. Let us check if the connection itself is working. Excuse me, is the IP address at the end your home IP address? Yes, that's right. It seems the connection is working, at least. Yes, that is correct. We will do with this issue later, but let me introduce a convenient method. At home, when you turn off your router, the IP address often changes. This router has a feature that assigns a domain name to the IP address, so you can use the domain name to perform the backup. This is called dynamic DNS. It is also known as DDNS, and you can use it to set up and host services like WordPress on your PC. I have previously posted a related video, so feel free to check it out for more information. In certain internet environments, such as apartment-style internet or cable TV connections, shared IP addresses are often used. This means that a single global IP address is shared among 
multiple users by a specific Enigma provider. While I will not go into detail here, in such environments there may be restrictions on port forwarding and remote access. However, there are some solutions that can help resolve these issues. Let is set aside the side notes and solve the previous problem. If the command to transfer the SSH key to another PC is restricted, we will have to handle it manually. First, let us check the contents of the public key. Wait, isn't this something we shouldn't show to others? Is this okay? It is fine. I will take care of it later. Based on the displayed contents, I will prepare the command shown in the video. By pasting the previously copied string into the public key section, you can manually create the key. All right, let us give it a try. So, I'll be manually creating the key on my own computer, right? Is that because it can't be transferred? Yes, since it is restricted, we have no choice but to do it this way. Although, even though it is this computer, I am remotely operating it via SOH from my Windows computer. Originally, the file should have been created, as shown in the video. Now, I will input the command based on the key information created on the rental server where the files are. Wait, since I'm using a key to connect to the Ubuntu PC remotely, isn't there a risk that this command could prevent me from connecting via SSH from my Windows PC? Let me explain this in detail, so please wait a moment. The command in the video allows you to add a new key while keeping the existing public key. So, you do not need to worry. However, if you want to overwrite the existing information, you can just slightly modify the command. Here is what it looks like specifically. I see, so just a small change in the symbols will make it overwrite, right? Actually, while I have been introducing commands so far, the method I personally use is to directly add public keys to the file or remove unnecessary keys using an editor. The reason is that I am used to navigating to the directory where the file is located and working there. Now, we are ready to perform the backup. Fortunately, it seems that rsync is available on the rental server. rsync is a command used to synchronize files and directories quickly and efficiently. It only copies the parts that have changed between local and remote systems, minimizing the amount of data transferred. Additionally, it is often used for backups and mirroring, and it is especially convenient when dealing with large amounts of files. When transferring from my own computer, I usually use Reclone, but I cannot just install it on restricted servers. Finally, the command is ready. Let is start the transfer right away. Oh, it worked. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. But this is where the real task begins. First, let us check if the files were successfully transferred to my computer. I will navigate in to the backup directory we created at the beginning. This is great. All the data from the source has been copied. All right, but what happens when the data on the source decreases? Actually, if files are removed from the source and you use the same command again, it will not result in a complete sync. In other words, the files that were deleted from the source will still remain on your computer. So, it could be a problem if we're dealing with large files. Is there a solution? Actually, there is. Here it is. To perform a full sync, like in the video, you can simply use the delete option. Additionally, it is possible to exclude certain directories or files from the sync. There are often cases where you do not need to back up cache or log files, and since there is no point if we do not save the database, we will back that up as well. The actual content is stored in the database. In other words, without the database, all the site's content would be lost. Even if you back up just the files without the database, you would end up with 
an empty site. For most rental servers, the database is often not covered by support, so you will need to handle it yourself. Oh, it resulted in an error. We will deal with this error later, but for now, let me briefly touch on how to back up the database. But can't you use plugins to back up both the files and the database? You are absolutely right, but plugins often end up using system commands internally to perform the backup. So, for learning purposes, I recommend this method. Using plugins can improve backup efficiency and reduce the risk of user error, making them very convenient when manual operations become cumbersome. Now, let us solve the issue of not being able to back up the database. After investigating, I found that by adding a certain option, the problem could be resolved. It seems that this error occurred due to insufficient permissions related to the table space. Using the option shown in the video, it looks like the issue can be easily resolved. This time it worked, and the process is fast too. Yes, now we just need to set it up for regular backups. However, Chrome which is the equivalent of task scheduler in Windows, cannot be used due to restrictions. Now, we will create a script and a CNF file as shown below. Make sure to pay attention to the file extension and grant the script execute permissions. If you have multiple databases, write the corresponding usernames and passwords for each database in the CNF file. Here is how the files are actually set up. So, by running this script, you'll be able to back up four databases, right? Yes, exactly. Do not. You think it would be a bit tricky to do this with a plugin? Fortunately, even if cron cannot be used via command, it seems it can be set up through the browser. With this, all the data will be automatically backed up to your computer, so there is no need to do anything manually. There are also many things related to security and other details that could not be fully covered in, in the video. I think this will be especially helpful for copying commands, so please check the links in the video description for more details. That is it for now everyone. See you next time. Goodbye.